Hi, my name is Pat and this is my channel Book Chat with Pat and I'm glad that you're here. Today I'd like to talk about another frequently challenged or banned book, um, Alice Walker's The Color Purple. I'm reading 24 banned books in 2024 as part of the great challenge that was created by the incredible MJ at Reading This Life. I'd like to talk a little bit today about the book, about its long history of being challenged uh, and or banned, and a little bit too about my experience of teaching this novel for many years to seniors in high school. Um, the edition that I just showed, this one, this, this was the first paperback edition from 1982. This is the book that I bought in 1982. Um, and this is the edition that I taught the book from. Um, this is my copy with all of my uh, teaching notes in it, all of my annotations um, from the many, many years that I that I that I taught this that I taught this this novel. I think my annotations are in purple too, in the color purple. <laughs> okay. Um, the color purple is an epistolary novel that ha that was published in 1982 and has been challenged repeatedly over the 40 year history, 40 plus years since the novel was written. Alice Walker was awarded the Pulitzer Prize in 1983 for this novel, making her the first African American woman to win that prestigious prize. She also was awarded the National Book Award for Fiction that year as well. The novel opens in the early 1900s in Georgia, and it spans the next 40 years in the lives of the characters. The main character and primary narrator is a young girl named Celie. She is a poor, barely educated African-American 14-year-old girl who at the opening of the novel is being sexually abused by the man she believes to be her father. The novel opens as letters that Celie is writing to God because her father tells her that she better not tell anyone but God about what he's doing, what, what's happening to her. So the first part of the novel is basically her journal, her letters to God about the horrors of, of, her, of her life. She becomes pregnant twice by her father and he takes both babies away from her and Celie does not know what happens to them. The opening of the novel is brutal in its depiction of the cruelty and abuse that Celie suffers. Her only solace at this time comes from her relationship with her sister, Nettie. Celie is soon forced into an abusive marriage with a man that she refers to only as Mr. He's a widower with a bunch of severely neglected kids, and he wants somebody to come and take care of his house and take care of his kids. Mr. actually wanted Nettie, but their father would only allow him to have <clears throat> Celie. At one point, Nettie comes to visit Celie and Mr but when she dares to fight off Mr.'s advances, he forces her to leave. Nettie promises that she will write to Celie, but Celie doesn't receive any letters. As if life isn't bad enough for Celie, she's soon left to care for Shug Avery, who is Mr.'s mistress, who comes to visit, and she's in very, very poor health. As Celie cares for Suge and nurses her back to health, they begin to develop first a friendship. Celie is completely infatuated with Suge and eventually she tells Suge how Mr. has been treating her. Suge begins to treat Celie with kindness and care after that 
and eventually they develop both an emotional and a physical relationship. Seely experiences a sexual awakening with Suge Avery. She has never known sex to be anything but rape and abuse. She had no idea that there could be anything like pleasure associated with sex until she meets Suge. Suge goes on to continue her relationship with Mr. And she also eventually marries someone else. But Celie's life has been forever changed. Mostly, she gains the courage to stand up for herself and to stand up to Mr. Most people read this novel as Celie's journey to becoming a fully independent woman. Her story is one of resilience and overcoming unimaginable obstacles. She gains strength primarily through her relationships with the women in her life. Her sister, her stepson's wife, Sophia, and Suge Avery. Without giving anything else away, I will say that this is a novel of survival and triumph. Seely survives and thrives. She does not actually lose everyone she loves. In fact, she ends up with a community of love around her. The novel was soon adapted into a movie directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Whoopi Goldberg, Danny Glover, and Oprah Winfrey. It was a box office success and it was nominated for 11 Academy Awards. But in a complete and total snub by the Academy, it won none. Whoopi Goldberg did win Best Actress in a Drama in the Golden Globe Awards, and the American Film Institute includes it on its list of most inspiring films. <clears throat> the Color Purple was also made into a very popular Broadway musical that ran from 2005 through 2008. And there was a Broadway revival that ran from 2015 through 2017. Most recently, in 2023, a new musical film opened in London in November and on Christmas Day in the United States. The novel has experienced a long history of challenges and bans. Repeatedly, The Color Purple makes it onto the American Library Association's list of most frequently banned books. Objections to the novel include its use of the vernacular instead of standard written English, its portrayal of the brutality of several black men, its depiction of sexual violence, and its depiction of a relationship between two women. The first major attempt to ban this book occurred shortly after it was written in 1984, when a parent object, objected to its use in a classroom in Oakland, California. The effort to ban the book resulted in sales of the color purple skyrocketing. This effort to ban the book was unsuccessful and the Oakland Board of Ed voted to keep the book in its libraries and in its curriculum. In 2013, there were multiple challenges to the novel in Brunswick, North Carolina. One parent wrote, quote, one can eat from a cafeteria or a dumpster, but one would hope those placed in charge of our children would have exercised better oversight. The book survived multiple attempts to have it removed from schools and libraries in North Carolina. In 2022, a parent group in the Indian County School District in Florida objected to 156 books on shelves in school classrooms and libraries, claiming that the books contained everything from pornography to critical race 
theory. The color purple was on this list. Thus far, it has survived all of the challenges there, although several other books have been removed from classrooms and school libraries. The school board approved a permission slip allowing parents to restrict their child's use of any library books. The novel is currently banned from all public libraries, classrooms, and school libraries in the Pencrest School District in Pennsylvania. The more I dig into this banned book business, the more I am convinced that the people urging these bans could not have actually read the books that they want to ban. Anyone can take a passage out of context and completely misunderstand what the book is about. I used to teach The Color Purple to seniors in high school in a literature course called Contemporary Fiction. Of course, it is disturbing to read that a 14-year-old could have been sexually abused by a family member. And the domestic abuse in Seeley's marriage is also painful to read about. But the novel does not end with these events. The point of the novel is that Seeley overcomes seemingly insurmountable odds to lead a joyful and independent life, largely because of the powerful relationships that she has in her life with women. There is a metaphor of sewing and quilting that runs throughout the novel. At first, Celie is known for her exceptional sewing abilities, but it is very clear that sewing is viewed as women's work to be done in the home. But as the novel progresses, Celie begins to use her sewing skills as a way to bond with the other women in her life. Relatively early on, she has a tremendous disagreement with Sophia, who is married to Celie's stepson. When they are able to reconcile their differences, Celie and Sophia take to using some old curtains to sew them into a quilt. And as they sew, they talk, they laugh. It's the first time in the novel that Celie laughs and they repair their misunderstandings. Later, when Celie is nursing Shug back to health, she teaches Shug how to sew, which Shug does at first with, quote, long crooked stitches. As Celie and Shug continue to quilt together, Celie says, quote, for the first time in my life, I feel just right. Later, after observing her work a plow on the farm, Shug suggests to Celie that she might want to sew herself a pair of pants, which would be more appropriate for the kind of work that she's doing. So Celie does. And this suggestion actually leads to Celie creating a whole line of pants that everybody wants, and she starts to sell them. And this eventually leads to her becoming financially independent. It's also sewing that connects Celie to the children that she had been forced to give up as a 14-year-old. But I won't go into more detail about how that happens in order to avoid spoilers. Sewing and quilting become a metaphor for the connections that Celie has with others and with the community of love and support that is stitched all around her like a patchwork quilt. So one year I was teaching this novel to my eighth period senior contemporary fiction class and this was a group of kids that I just absolutely loved. I remember that it was June, it was the end of the school year, it was just a few weeks from graduation for these kids, and we were talking that particular day about this sewing and quilting metaphor that runs through the whole novel, and we were finding examples in the text 
and discussing what they mean, what they mean in Seeley's, in Seeley's life. I offhandedly said that I really wished that we could make a quilt, a class quilt. Well, I had a student, a wonderfully talented student, who was about to go off and study at the Fashion Institute of Technology. She came up to me after class and she said, we could make a quilt. She said, I can teach everybody how to sew. And sure enough, <clears throat> she taught my class, the boys and the girls, she taught everyone enough so that each one of us could make a patch in a quilt. And we made a class quilt. I'm gonna try to show you here. Every student, every student has um, a patch in, in the quilt, and every student sewed something that meant something to them. This is somebody sewing, fa their favorite book in the class was The Kite Runner. Um, this was somebody who was a great skateboarder. He sewed a little skateboard, and they sewed hearts and stars. And then my, my patch is in the middle of the purple square, and it just says, Miss M loves period eight. And then they all also signed the purple box around the, around the middle. I'm gonna cover myself in my quilt here. <clears throat> so this quilt that came out of the color purple was a symbol of our work together, of our journey together as readers and learners. And yes, I can tell you that it is a symbol of the love that we felt for one another. And this quilt hung in my classroom and had a whole bulletin board all to itself um, until the day that I retired. So that's a little bit about Alice Walker's The Color Purple. As always, I thank you for watching. I will speak with you again soon. I hope you're all doing well. Take care.